Hello there. Uh, today we will talk about high order functions and closures in JavaScript. Um, by covering these topics, we will also let groundwork for uh, later sessions. And um, uh, from a Java programmer's point of view, things might become a little bit spooky in a couple of minutes, so I just want you to be warned, maybe. Okay, let's say we have a function called makeFunk taking a single argument x. And this function in turn returns another function Uh, which simply alerts the current value of x. Uh, so this concept uh, is called a high order function. Uh, in JavaScript functions are created rather spontaneously. They are created on the fly. So what that means uh, when control flow encounters this function statement, uh, the function gets created. So prior to that, the function does not exist. And um, this can happen several times. And since uh, functions are first-class objects, they cannot only pass into fu other functions as parameters. They, it's also possible that a um, function returns another function. And if a function returns another function, we are talking about high-order functions. So how does it work, after all? Uh, by the way, uh, this has nothing to do with closure so far, but uh, I will use. I want to to use uh, high order functions to construct an an a better example. Um, uh, I will then use to illustrate the closure stuff. Okay. Um, let's say we have a few calls um, to our make func function. And um, in traditional languages like C, C++, and also Java, uh, the lifetime of local variables is restricted, and especially it is bound to the control flow. Uh, what does it mean? As soon as the control flow will exit this function, so the function is has completed, um, all local identifiers are will be removed from memory. So in C or C++, uh, uh, the variables are removed from the stack. In JavaScript, this is not necessarily the case. Okay, and uh, uh, what is, the, what is the, the, the weird thing about that statement here? Because obviously, x is a local variable, and uh, but this local variable is used within this inner function here. Uh, not in a function, the function that gets created. So, And the weird thing is that uh, since this function gets created and since this function is returned, it might be the case that it is called a long time after pro uh, control flow has already left the my func. And the, the crucial question is now, um, what does it mean to our x variable? Okay, we'll, we will find out in a couple of uh, instances. Um, but once again, since we know makeFunk returns a function, and we can tell by looking at this assignment that the return value is then stored in this local identifier, uh, in this identifier f1, so f1 actually becomes a function, and uh, that means it can be invoked. And of course, the same thing uh, will work for F2 respectively. So, okay, <coughs> what will happen if we execute this? Oopsie. Uh, 10 and 20. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Okay. Um, Obviously, let's say let's consider this line here. We passing uh, a numer numeric value into my func. So 
uh, x in turn gets populated and has uh, the value of 10. And uh, then this function here, okay, I will write this, write, I'm going to write, write this in a different fashion slightly. So obviously, uh, this function gets his own copy of x. Because after we invoke my func, make func with 20, and we do the invocations here, we see that x still has the value the function has as it got created, as, as it got created. And this is really strange. So, but after all, is it a, is it a, and this, this circumstance is called a closure. So the fact that a function has not only his own namespace, like we can could do here, let's say it doesn't make sense in this example, but it doesn't matter, just to want to show that there is another uh, namespace. It also has access to his enclosing functions, and <coughs> the identifiers of the enclosing functions at the time it got created. That's very decisive. That's the point here. At the time it got created, at this point x has a has a value of 10 so this inner function here gets its own copy of x with a value of 10 and at this point it there's a 20 and then the next function which gets which which is uh, it gets created sorry has another copy of x uh, having the value 20 and <coughs> it's important to note here that we really have two instinct uh, distinct functions. It's not the same one. It get the function gets created right here. Uh, okay, but uh, is it really a variable after all, or is it just the value? I don't know. Okay, uh, we don't know so far. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, let's amend this example. And we're going to delete this line again so because it doesn't make sense. Okay, let's see what happens. 11 and 21. So this is not really surprising, right? Because I already told you that this function gets its own copy of the enclosing stuff. So it is not does not really surprise us when this works and we have instead of 10 the 11 or instead of the 20 uh, we're alerting a value of 21. This is not the point. Okay, but let's have a look at this. So what will happen now? Okay, we, we will you're going to om omit that for a while. So, um, do we have three time eleven or not? Let's have a look at it. Save eleven, twelve, and thirteen. And this is really interesting. So, because let's say I have these. Well, y again, 10. So, uh, these variable will be destroyed when the contro control flow will exit this function here. But obviously, x still exists. So we have a kind of, of namespace. The, the function remembers the value even among uh, successive calls. And this is a really interesting effect. So, okay, summing up, uh, a closure, the closure is that an inner function has access to all its enclosing functions recursively and uh, at the time it was created. And this is a decisive point at this, point at this time. So it's... Um, 
yeah, it's it's really a little bit complicated. It took me some time to work it out because I'm originally, traditionally, I'm a Java programmer, and as a Java programmer, you do not think about st such stuff because in Java there are no high order functions at all, and uh, yet as yet there are no closures. Uh, they are planned for a couple of. I was. Uh, I don't know if Java 7 should have closures. I I'm, I'm, I'm obvious, uh, honestly, I'm not sure because I'm still working with Java 6 at work and so on. Okay, but as, a, um, as I wanted to say, what I wanted to say is that as a Java programmer, you usually do not think about stuff like that, but this is really, this is really interesting. And uh, the best thing about it is that we can take these concepts and, uh, to, uh, to rebuild, as we will see during the next session, to rebuild a private object scope as it is in Java. So um, we can do the exactly the same thing. So it is not that nice as it is in Java, but we will see that it's possible by using these closures and this high order function stuff. And uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's a deal. Okay, thanks for watching. Um, and I hope to that you will watch all the next session. Bye bye. Ooh.